Okay, um, I wanted to share my favorite memory of Robin Williams. This is going to be an age-appropriate video because younger people will probably see it. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, I found out last night I was, uh, turning on Fox News about 10 to 7 Eastern Time. Waiting for Greta Van Susten to come on 10 minutes later. And they said, Rob Williams, it just came over the wire. Rob Williams is dead. And I was like, what? Oh, my God. And then they said that it might be suicide. Now, they are supposed to confirm or disprove whatever happened in a little while. By the time this is uploaded, they might have confirmed this or disproven that or whatever. But as I sit here now, his death is suspected to be a suicide, but it has not yet been confirmed. And I don't want to say anything that I'm going to regret later. Now, when I was five years old, I had my ankle stretched and I had a muscle in my arm stretched. When I was six, I had the ankle stretched again and I had a piece of muscle move from here to here because my wrist wasn't moving when I was a kid. A lot of guys don't have a bum hand. Um, and when I was 20, I had to have the heel cord stretched again because I had done, I had finished growing and the heel cord had to be stretched a little bit more. So I'm 20 years old, it's 2002, and I have my ankle surgery done, and for 40 days I had to sit in a, in a giant 20 pound plaster cast on my leg. They tried giving me crutches, but I almost fell over because the cast was too heavy and I was off balance. I had to be on a walker for 13 days. Okay, 13 days. Now, the entire duration of the ordeal, 40 days, I had to lay on my back on the bed above the covers with my leg elevated by a blanket at the foot of the bed. For the first 13 days, I had to take a shower in the sink. I had to wash my hair, I had a sponge bathe. My father's been retired since 1997. My mother, my mother retired last December. But on weekends, my mother and father wanted to go out places and I had to stay home. And on top of that, my, my mother had to get my uncle over here to babysit me in case I wanted to bring a glass of water from the kitchen to the dining room, in case I wanted to have a sandwich and sit down and eat it in case I fell. The main thing my uncle was here was in case I fell because if I fell I wouldn't be able to get back up again. So I had to be babysat at 20 years old and that's very very demoralizing and after 13 days of this they gave me a little booty to put on. It was like a, a booted shoe. You've probably seen them in a, a, sh a shoe with the straps on them to walk around a little bit. And I would no longer need the walker, thank God. And I'd be able to be by myself for a few hours, thank God. And when I got this walking boot on, I had to take off the boot, take a shower. I had to take off the boot, the little walking boot, put on a woman's stocking. I had to have my mother go out and buy me woman's stockings to put on my leg, my cast. Then I had to put powder on that. Then I had to put the little booty back on. Then I had to wear a latex legging, sleeve, boot, pant leg, whatever, that would go from my foot up to my hip, and I'm five foot nine. Then I would take a shower with that and take that off, and the prep was about 20 minutes to do this, 10 minutes to do that. Oh, it was real, real bad. And I. It was, it was hard for me. And for the first 13 days before I got the little walking boot, when I had to hop around on the walker, I was very demoralized. I was depressed. And it was just frustrating. And there was a, a Robin Williams special on HBO. And it was being broadcast live. Okay, they were filming it live, broadcasting it live. He was down in New York City, and I'm in Westchester, which is right above New York City. And it was an hour and a half long. He's making fun of Britney Spears. Global war on terrorism is going on. 
and he, he, he's just, for like an hour and a half straight, I am absolutely dying laughing. And for that hour and a half, I was able to forget about my ordeal. And a year later, I'm in Costco looking at the DVD section. And I bought the DVD, Robin Williams Live on Broadway. That, um, that is an adult comedy show, so you might not want to let the five-year-old see it because it's really nasty on there. Um, and that was my memory of him. And last night, I'm thinking back to that, and I'm actually... I'm actually crying over that. I said, my God. Um, Robin Williams was very involved with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. He would go and do his infomercials asking for donations. He would donate money himself. He would donate time to the kids with cancer. Um, he would donate time to the troops. He would do USO tours. Um, he would actually lobby and raise money for veterans to deal with post-traumatic stress, depression, um, severe handicaps that vets have coming home. And the, the, the issue I have on my ankle is a drop in the bucket compared to what other people have to go through. John Walsh had a TV talk show from America's Most Wanted. He had a TV talk show many years ago, and there was a boy who's got to be in his early 20s now. This boy had his legs amputated from below the knee, sort of like his shin bone, to his feet, cut off, because he had something wrong, and I forget what it was exactly. And like my friend Joe Acasella, God rest his soul, the town clerk from Harrison, New York, and like uh, Dominique Mochiano's sister, Jen Bricker, who was born without legs, this kid wanted to be just as active as a lot of people are when they have a handicap, so to speak. And this kid would swim without legs. He had the legs from the shin down were cut off, but he learned how to swim with just three quarters of a leg, or less than that. He learned to put prosthetics on and bicycle and run. And Robin Williams was actually his partner on a few marathons. They did like a triathlon where he would actually swim. He actually swam, and because he didn't have prosthetic legs on, he had to actually crawl up to the line where Robin Williams was, Ted Robin Williams, and Robin Williams got on the bike and rode. So he did this thing with Robin Williams, and this, and you know, Robin Williams wasn't getting paid a dime for this at all. He was doing this solely on his own time, and they actually couldn't get him there because he was busy elsewhere. The John Wall Show, the John Wall Show was filmed in New York City, and kids in the audience, and they get Robin on the phone, and and you get to see how alive he was and how happy he was. that Robin Williams on the phone with him, and. Rob Williams is being broadcast in the intercom and to the audience, and he's making jokes. And just, oh my God! I mean, it's just uh, it's. And he was a. I mean, he was just a great comedian. I didn't like all of his movies. I'm not gonna lie about that. Some of them were kiddie movies. Some of them were adult movies. Believe it or not, one of my favorite movies of his was Death to Smoochie, which was a critical failure. But it's just a zany comedy and it's got a cult following. Death to Smoochie. It is ridiculously off the wall funny, but the critics hate it. Mrs. Doubtfire. You see these guys in dressed as women like Dustin Hoffman, and you're like, oh my god, you look nasty. But Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire, I mean, I thought he was a woman. If I didn't know any better, I would swear he was a woman. I mean, he could pull that off. And it's just such a sin. I mean, he was, he had alcoholism, he had depression, and he could make anybody laugh except himself. And he went out of his way to help everyone else with their problems, but he couldn't help himself with his own problems. And that's a real sad thing. Um, also, side note, John Belushi and Rob Williams used to do cocaine together many years ago. And John Belushi died on March 5th, 1982. And the day John Belushi was laid to rest, March 9th, 1982, my mother was in labor with me. And I was fighting for my survival. I almost died in the womb. And John Belushi is being laid to rest. And the next day I'm born on March 10th. And the picture from the newspaper is um, um, 
Bill Murray putting a flower on John Belushi's casket at the funeral. So John Belushi's death convinced Robin Williams to stop using cocaine, but he still had to battle alcoholism and depression, and he was a very, very flawed man. I mean, he was, he, but he was, he was a great person, and we, and he was just a great humanitarian. I, mean, I don't think any celebrity did as much charitable work as him. Any celebrity. And he made a lot of people happy and he changed a lot of lives, but man, it's just, it's just unreal. And no. But, you know, I mean, he was a great man, but he had great flaws. And it doesn't make him a bad person. People that have alcoholism are not evil. I've had alcoholism in my family. And people that have depression are not evil. They just, they're just sick and they need help. They can get it, but it's just, it's just so overwhelming. And I hope that we remember him for the people that he helped himself and not... I hope we don't remember his his problems and I hope his failures don't define his legacy. But he was just such a great oh and the newer generations will appreciate him the way I appreciate John Belushi. John Belushi died when I was in my mother's womb, but I can still look at his work. And the next generations will appreciate Robert Williams' gifts, but but we um uh, we we lost. There will, there will never be another. There will never be another Rob Williams ever. He, we will never see him again ever. He was one of a kind. And that, that was my favorite memory because I was down. I was upset about my stupid leg cast and I was in a bad mood. And for an hour and a half, I completely forgot my problems. I just sat there and laughed with my ass off and I completely forgot all my own problems. And ironically, the man that's entertaining me, he has his own demons that are a thousand times worse than mine. And that's just so upsetting. It really is. I really can't. He has three kids, and I just feel so bad for his kids who are younger than me, old and younger than me. Um, and they, they, had a, they have a great legacy. I mean, oh my God. Well, that was my favorite memory of Robin. And I wanted it to be tasteful. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you had to talk about a couple of adult issues, but that's the way it is. And we'll find out later or not. This coroner's report's going to come out. We'll find out later or not what exactly happened. But it doesn't look good. It's just sin. And I had I had a member of my family commit suicide, and it's not a fun thing to go through. It's not a fun thing. Suicide is not fun. If if that is the case with him, it's just not a fun thing to go through. Believe me, it's not. You have no idea what the family's gonna go through after you're gone. So it's it's not a fun thing to live through. It really isn't. Okay, thank you.